All right, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Power Automate to generate a set of folders, basically a folder per employee in your organization that will be shared with that specific employee. So our scenario here is that we have our human resources site, which is really meant for the human resources team or, or staff to, to manage content. Uh, it's not really meant to be used by everyone in the organization and therefore not available to everyone in the organization. Uh, but for the purpose of sharing content, sharing documents, we want to create a folder for each employee to serve as kind of a drop box so they can drop documents in there for HR or vice versa. So we start out with our employees list here where we've got a last name, first name column, just text columns there. Then we have an account column, which is a person column. So it's a look up to their record in Azure Active Directory. That's kind of important because in order to share the file with, or the folder rather, with that employee, we need a, we need to know that they are active, that their account's active and that what their email address is. So we want to make sure that that's popular. You'll note that we have a couple new employees here yet who haven't actually started, who have not activated their accounts, don't have an account, uh, so that field is empty for them. Uh, we also have a text column here for the employee folder, which will just be a link to the folder, but we're going to use a little JSON formatting to make it look like a pretty icon that the staff members can click on to go to that particular employee's folder. Uh, obviously, when we're going through, we want to make sure that we create an employee, create a folder for each employee that doesn't already have one. Uh, but if they don't have an account, we don't want to create a folder because we won't be able to share that folder with them. In other words, the flow would would run, but then when it tries to share the file, share the folder, it that part of the flow will fail because there is no account to share it with. Uh, so let's. Uh, the other part of this, the employee folders themselves live in a document library that I created simply called employee folders. Nothing fancy, just a standard out of the box document library. Uh, jumping over to the flow that's going to make all this happen. Uh, this is set up as a recurring flow. So in other words, I don't want to manually have people manually run it to create those things. I want it to basically check this list periodically or check that employees list periodically and if the person you know if the entry does not have a folder yet does have an account then create that folder and share it with them so I have this set for an eight hour interval so three times a day you could have it run once a day you could have it run every hour whatever you know whatever floats your boat uh, so the first step of this is to get the employees who don't already have a folder but do have an account. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is it's simply a get items action. So I just renamed it for clarity. Uh, but it's getting items from the human resources site from that employees list. And I have a filter query here uh, that's checking to see if that employee folder column and this is the internal name of the column so uh, while in the list here there's a space between employee and folder I typed it in that way when I added the column but when it gets created SharePoint helpfully removes that space because spaces and column names are messy uh, so the internal name is just employee folder all one word so if employee folder equals null and uh, the account email. Now, account being a person column, it's a complex column and includes a whole set of properties, including their name, their email, an ID number, etc. Um, the one consistent value that all accounts are going to have, or all person column values are going to have, is an email. So, in order to specify that, we need to put a forward slash, and then it's capital E, capital M and then small AIL is not equal to null. So in other words, if they, if they don't have a folder, but they do have an email, then return those people or return those records from that list. Then uh, I have an apply to each here, 
that is going to run for every item that's returned from that list. So basically it's just the outputs of the, the, the values, each value that's returned from that get items action. And then from there, I'm going to use a create new folder action. Pretty simple, straightforward. It's just creating a folder in HR, in employee folders. And then just to keep the, because the folder name is essentially going to be part of the URL. Um, I, again, you can throw other characters, you can throw spaces in here, but I don't like doing that. So I'm just using underscores. So we've got last name, underscore, first name, uh, underscore HR underscore files uh, and it's named this way very specifically because when you share this with that user it's going to show up under their OneDrive in their shared items uh, or you know, shared with me section so I want to make sure that they know that that folder is for HR files so we're going to create that new folder then we're going to update the item so basically update that entry the entry that we're currently operating on in the employees list or from the employees list and we're just basically populating the employee folder with the link that's being output from this create new folder action so if I empty that out and in the dynamic content search for link there is create new folder link to item that's what I want to put there and I'm not adding anything else just because none of the other fields are required, that's the only one that I want to populate. Uh, and next, in order to share that folder that was just created with that particular employee, now there is a create sharing link uh, action here in Power Automate. So I, just to show you what that looks like, even though we're not going to use it, and I'll explain why we're not going to use it, there is a, an action to create a sharing link for a file or folder. So I'm going to select that and select the site and the library name and the item ID, which would be the ID of the create output from the create new folder action. Uh, this is the, well, we can create a view and edit link type, but the link scope only has two possible options. It can be anyone with the link, including anonymous, so basically anonymous, uh, or people in your organization. And I don't want everyone in the organization, I certainly don't want to be anonymous, and I certainly don't want everyone in the organization to have access to an individual user's um, HR file folder. So what I need to do is scope this to a user and that's simply not an option in this action at least not yet I kind of hope that it is because the way the workaround is a little complicated um, let me just delete this since we're not going to use it uh, so the way to get around that is to send an HTTP request to SharePoint and this is a kind of a the Swiss Army knife of the SharePoint connector because you can use it for performing a lot of different operations using the REST API in SharePoint. Uh, so again, we need to specify the site address. Uh, the method is going to be post. And then the URI is going to be, uh, basically I'm kind of hard-coded hard most of this, but it's underscore API slash web slash list slash get by title and then in parentheses and single quotes employee folder so the the document library name slash get item by ID and then the dynamic value again it's the ID from that create new folder action uh, again inside parentheses and single quotes and then at the end slash share link so this is basically the API the the, the method or the the call to the rest API that is going to generate a sharing link now, in order to tell it that there, there's some parameters involved that we're going to pass through the body of this HTTP request. And this could be a little tricky to, to find. You won't find it documented anywhere. I'm going to include this in the, uh, at least the kind of the anonymized part of it, in the description for this video. But this is something that you can find by using the developer tools in a browser and basically watching the HD, uh, 
the, the network traffic and getting the payload uh, that's delivered or that, that's generated when you create a sharing link for a specific user. So most of them are pretty standard. So we've got the, you know, create link true. So it's going to create a link. Uh, link kind is six. I'm not sure what that equates to. I'm sure there's some documentation out there that has the, the link kind index numbers and what they actually mean. Um, expiration is null, so it will never expire. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure what role is. Um, restrict share membership is true. Update password false. There is no password on it. Scope is two, which means, I believe that means specific user. But then the, the key part of it is at the end here, in order to specify which user, you need this format here. So it's going to be people picker input with a key, and I'm passing in the that basically the key is going to be the email address of the person with whom you want to share this. Uh, so I'm passing in the account email value from our dynamic data. Uh, and then there's this is resolved true, basically meaning that the account actually exists. So again, you don't need to understand what all this means. I'm going to put it in the description. You'll just need to know where to plug in the email address, which is going to be right here. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the action. So let me just save this just to be sure that it's going to work properly. Uh, and because this is a scheduled flow, I could wait for it to run it at, at its appointed time, but I can also just manually run it. So I'll click run and run flow and done. And if I jump back over to our employees list here, there we have the URLs still working. It looks like Louise has not been generated. There it is. And if I go over to the employee folders, refresh that, there are their folders. And if I look at one of these, I'll just click on the, uh, the item menu here for Andrew Carter's, click manage access. We can see that it has been shared with Andrew Carter. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, now the last step of this, and this is optional, but I kind of think it's it just makes things easier because this employee folder that's just text, so it's not a clickable link. Uh, so I'm going to use a little bit of JSON formatting, and uh, I'll also include this in the the description of the video as well, um, so you don't have to really under really understand what how this works but you'll know where to paste it so I'm just going to copy it in so copy and in the column heading here I'm going to go to column settings format this column advanced mode clear out whatever is there and control V to paste that in hit save and then we can close this panel so now we have the, their name, their account, and a nice clickable link. So if I need to get to, as a HR staff member, if I need to get to, let's say, Peter's employee folder, I can simply click on that and it will take me straight into his folder. Uh, now, from the user perspective, so how do these people access this? Because one, one piece of this uh, that did not happen because Essentially, normally when you share something, you're sending a link, but when you generate it through that HTTP request, there's probably a way to generate an email to them, but I didn't do that. So basically, they're not going to know that they have this folder. Uh, so what you would want to do is you could in the at kind of at the end of that flow after that folder is generated and that share is generated, you could just add in an email action to send them an email saying, this is your, you know, this is your network folder for HR. This is where you'll drop in your timesheets or reimbursement requests, whatever it might be. Uh, but the individual users will also be able to go to their OneDrive. So if I go over to another browser window here where I'm logged in as Peter, uh, looking at my OneDrive or Peter's OneDrive, I should say, and I go to shared 
there is the, well, there are a few copies because I've been testing this, uh, but there you'll see um, Newkirk Peter HR files. Uh, and when I open that, there it is. So that basically every employee will be able to access their folder directly through that link rather than having to, you know, remember where the folder is. They simply, it's going to be in their shared items. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was useful. As I said, I will include the important pieces of the flow, the important codes like the uh, the the body for the the HTTP requests as well as the uh, other details of that in the description of the video. So hopefully this was useful. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Um, and have a great day.